Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and another Halloween video. Now, I warned you yesterday that today's one is definitely a little bit strange and it's one that you guys have been suggesting probably since I started my channel, but because it didn't exactly fit into what I was doing necessarily, I never really covered it, but I've known about it for a while. I've really wanted to tell you guys this story. Once you guys really started asking over and over again on Twitter, I decided this was perfect. And I figured this was a great creepy way to kind of dive deeper into Halloween with me after Mount Everest, which was definitely creepy, but this is a whole different level of creepy. So today's video is on Sabina and Ursula Erickson, and this case is something else. <laughs> Sabina and Ursula Erickson were twin sisters, identical, born on November 3rd, 1967 in Sweden. They had a fairly average life growing up with an older brother named Bjorn and an older sister named Mona. They had no issues with mental health that anyone saw, no sort of behavioral problems, and they didn't have any run-ins with the law. So what happened in May of 2008 can still not really 100% be explained. In 2000, Ursula moved to the US and Sabina lived in Ireland with her husband and two children. But on Friday, May 16th, 2008, eight years after they parted ways, Ursula left the US to visit Sabina in Ireland. And nobody is really sure if there was any reason behind this trip. There didn't really seem to be, but out of the blue, they somehow managed to be together in Ireland. Sabina and Ursula had been living apart for eight years, and despite being twins, they never really had that typical twin bond where they were inseparable up until this trip in specific. So once Ursula arrived in Ireland, her and her sister secretly left for Liverpool, England. They didn't tell Sabina's husband, they really didn't tell anybody, and it didn't even appear that this trip was planned until very, very last minute. The twins likely traveled by ferry and arrived in Liverpool by Saturday morning around 8.30 a.m. Right when the twin sisters arrived in Liverpool, they first went to the St. Anne Street Police Station and they expressed their concerns for Sabina's children that had been left behind in Ireland. Now, they never explained exactly why they were concerned. They just kind of came in and frantically said they were terrified for Sabina's children that she had left with her husband and authorities couldn't quite figure it out, so they decided to call the Irish government and have them check in on the children. And they found out that Sabina had actually been in a pretty bad argument with her husband just the night before. At 11.30, Sabina and Ursula headed off yet again, and this time they hopped onto a National Express coach headed to London. They suddenly left the bus at Keel Services. I could be butchering a lot of things in this. I apologize if I am. We know how I am with pronouncing things. but. This was a service station and they were dropped off because basically they weren't feeling well. Apparently what happened is Sabina and Ursula boarded the bus. They refused to put their bags in the luggage hold. And this was sketching everybody on the bus out. And the driver kept asking them to do it. They refused, they got more nervous. So the driver asked to search their bags. And again, when they refused, everyone was worried they had something illegal in there, possibly weapons. So they were kicked off the bus basically. So the manager of the service station also felt like something was very odd with the twins, especially the fact that they seemed so overly concerned of their bags. They were holding them tightly against their chest. They were nervously looking around. So they decided to call police. But authorities spoke to both of the women and came up with the conclusion that these women were harmless and there was no reason to be concerned with their presence. So authorities just left. But unfortunately, authorities spoke a little bit too soon. After authorities left, Sabina and Ursula started to leave the service station on foot and walked down towards the M6 or motorway or highway. You get the gist of it. 
and they were walking in like the middle section and this caused a ton of chaos on the M6 because you're not supposed to be in that area it was distracting a lot of the drivers and then on top of that out of absolutely nowhere both girls jumped over the guardrails and tried to cross one side of the highway Cars were swerving around the twins. Sabina was actually grazed by a car. So obviously authorities were called because they were just running around in the middle of the highway. Officers rushed to the incident and coincidentally, a television crew happened to be filming a new show called Motorway Cops and was currently filming the cops that were going to the motorway, as you would expect. And what they ended up capturing was terrifying. When authorities arrived, Sabina and Ursula were standing on a hard shoulder of the motorway and the police were being kind of like informed of the situation. Everyone was relatively calm. Both Sabina and Ursula were talking a little bit with the officers. They were talking amongst themselves. They were each smoking a cigarette. Out of absolutely nowhere, Ursula for some reason broke free and dashed straight into the motorway into the side of an oncoming car traveling nearly 60 miles an hour. And Sabina followed right after her and was hit head on by an oncoming car traveling at almost the exact same speed. Somehow, both Ursula and Sabina survived being hit by cars going 60 miles an hour. Ursula had crushed both of her legs and Sabina was unconscious for a little over 15 minutes. Paramedics were desperately trying to treat them as fast as they could, but Ursula, despite the fact that she had crushed both of her legs, went into an absolute panic. She was spitting at them, she was scratching, she was screaming at the top of her lungs. She kept telling the police she recognized them and that she knew they weren't real. And around the same time that Ursula is losing it, Sabina somehow gains consciousness and starts screaming to Ursula, they're going to steal your organs. And then she kept asking the police why they were trying to kill her. <sighs> It's okay, my love. Right. I'm trying to make sure you're okay. Right. Where's Paul? Oh, oh shit. Where's Paul? Right. Where's Paul? Now, somehow, Sabina managed to get on her feet, and she started screaming for police to come and help her, despite the fact that the police were the ones there in that moment trying to get them calmed down, trying to get them treatment. But she also wanted nothing to do with it and actually ended up hitting a police officer in the face and then ran again into traffic and somehow miraculously made it to the other side of the highway. Now, eventually officers caught up to Sabina and they were able to fully restrain her with handcuffs and gave her sedatives because at this point, they had no idea what was going through these women's minds. They just kept willingly running into traffic. They had been hit by cars. They're surprised they weren't dead, at least from two of the incidents that happened. So they just needed to get these women calm into a hospital. <laughs> They're obviously, well, they appear under the influence of something. We are helping you. She's got incredible strength. Because we want to protect you. Okay. Authorities went through the scene afterward and then to make it even more bizarre, they ended up finding a plethora of broken cell phones in the woman's belongings and that just confused them even more. Ursula ended up being airlifted to a hospital further away because of the severity of her trauma and Sabina ended up being taken to a more local hospital where Surprisingly enough, even more bizarre events started to unfold. Sabina seemed to not be concerned at all about her sister. She wasn't asking how she was. She wasn't asking where she was. She wasn't asking um, to see her. So this whole like double chaos that was happening on the motorway seemed to totally flatline, totally calm down. She's not asking about her sister. And that surprised me from start to finish dealing with her. She's never really asked how her sister is. It's, it's as if her sister didn't exist anymore. So after only five hours of the bizarre event and being checked out by the hospital physically, keep that in mind, Sabina was released to the police. Now, she was processed fully and the entire time again, she remained very calm. She seemed willing to be there. She did exactly as she was told. When you open the newspaper here, you feel just like, I don't know 
if you should uh, you laugh or, or cry for oh, them or you pray went... for them. <laughs> You're looking at how many wrinkles I've Yes, <laughs> my. Yeah, probably a man in his best age. Yeah, 45. Oh, yeah. 44? You got it. 45. 45. Can you put the chains up for me? They are so dirty and smelly, and they found only one socks for me. Yeah, so shut it up. Try not to breathe then. <laughs> and then she said something very bizarre to the officer, which should have been a major red flag, but apparently nobody took it seriously. We say always in Sweden that an accident rarely comes close. Usually at least once more follows first So somehow authorities looked past this and on May 18th she was released without ever receiving a psych evaluation. They only sentenced her to I think one night in jail but because she had been held already for so long they didn't actually keep her that night between like the hospital and all of that so she basically was just released into the world. But Sabina <laughs> never should have been released back out into the public because what she went on to do was the most horrific out of all of the events up to this point. So she immediately went out to wandering the streets again, except this time she was looking for her sister, who she wasn't concerned about before, but now that she wasn't under a watchful eye, she was very concerned. So at 7 p.m. that night, a man named Glenn Hollinshead and his friend Peter Malloy saw Sabina wandering on Christchurch Street. Now Sabina went up to them, calmly pet the dog that they were walking, and started a conversation with the men. Peter, right off the bat, noticed that she was acting friendly, but she seemed to be very, very nervous. She kept looking around her. Her mannerisms were very like twitchy and anxious and scared. She was asking where the nearest bed and breakfast was, but Glenn felt very bad for her and actually ended up offering her his home in Duke Street. She appeared a little bit nervous about this offer, but did happily accept it. And once she kind of had this offer on the table and was heading back to his house, she started diving a little bit deeper into what she was doing, that she was there trying to find her sister that was in the hospital, but she never mentioned to Glenn or Peter why exactly her sister was in the hospital or that she had just been released from a hospital and being detained by the police. And while she was acting nervous to Peter, she was still acting fairly normal and calm, but Sabina's odd behavior returned very, very quickly. By the time they got back to Glenn's house, the only thing she would do was frantically stare out the window, looking every direction possible like she was scared she was going to see somebody or like somebody was looking for her. And then that night while they were all eating dinner, she offered both Glenn and Peter a cigarette. But right as they were about to put the cigarettes in their mouth, she snatched them away from them and said, don't, they could be poisoned. Now, Peter was obviously still very concerned because at this point he'd been noticing red flags since they first spoke to her, but Glenn was again just a really loving and helpful person and they just really chalked it up to her just being worried about her sister and making her a little bit anxious. So they all just kind of ignored this behavior. The next day went on as normal. Glenn ended up helping Sabina call different hospitals in the local area to find Ursula. And unfortunately they didn't have any sort of luck and just went on about their day otherwise. And then at 7.40 p.m. that night, Glenn ran out of the home briefly to go to the neighbor's house to get tea bags for dinner. And upon returning home, Sabina, again, out of nowhere, stabbed him brutally. So Glenn comes stumbling out of his house screaming, she stabbed me, she stabbed me, and then collapsed dead on the ground. His neighbor frantically called authorities and Sabina ran, and yet again, her run was caught on CCTV. Sabina ran from the house, but she had a giant hammer in her hand and she would stop running every few seconds to violently smack herself in the head with it. Someone witnessing the scene ran over to try to take the hammer from Sabina, but yet again, she won that fight. She took a piece of roof tile out of one of her pockets and hit this man over the head with it, knocking him down completely. 
She ended up being chased all the way to Heron Cross, where she then jumped off of a 40-foot bridge and landed on another highway. But guess what? She survived it. Because why wouldn't she? She broke both of her ankles and fractured her skull. But that's it after jumping a 40-foot bridge, not even into water, onto the ground, onto concrete. Sabina ended up being arrested in June while recovering from her injuries and she was put on trial for the murder of Glenn. In September of 2009, she pled guilty to manslaughter and diminished responsibility after admitting immediately that she had stabbed Glenn five times with a kitchen knife. She never explained, though, throughout the entire trial why she did what she did. She never explained the actions and events that she carried out with her sister. It was all just very confusing because in these moments, she appeared insane and like she wasn't in her right mind and that there was something going on. But right after these episodes, she suddenly appeared fully sane again and she just acted like none of these things ever happened. Ursula had been released after some very intensive treatment and was relocated back to the US where she became a member of a church and has maintained out of the spotlight so far. From what I know, she hasn't had any more incidents, but Sabina's story ended a little bit differently. Sabina's defense claimed that she was suffering from, I'm going to butcher this even though I've used this term before, Folia do, I think that's how you say it, but basically it means madness of two. And we spoke about this in the Trump family, the video that I did way back at like the beginning of my channel. So basically they believed that her sister technically had been the main sufferer and then because she had this other connection because she was a twin she got drug into it and it ended up you know creating this giant disaster basically and then they even said she was possibly suffering from a rare disorder that made her hear voices that she couldn't necessarily interpret basically the entire time on trial her defense was trying to claim many different types of insanity to get her the least amount of charges and everything as possible and it actually kind of ended up working because she only ended up serving five years in prison after a judge concluded that she had a lower level of culpability of her actions. This whole thing threw everybody through a loop because they weren't quite sure how to treat this situation at all. Authorities said they honestly probably will never know why exactly Sabina and Ursula did what they did, why Sabina in specific decided to go on and kill Glenn, but they strongly feel that they did the best that they possibly could have done in the situation. But Glenn's brother Gary and Peter Molloy strongly disagree with this and they said they don't necessarily blame her for her actions, but she's clearly ill to a very, very large degree and her mental disorder should have been recognized much, much earlier and it could have prevented Glenn's death because authorities had spoken to these women many, many times Sabina herself was released without even having a psych evaluation from the hospital and from the police custody. She had told this person that was processing her that in Sweden, they never just had one incident and always came in pairs or possibly three different incidents. She basically was telling them something else was going to happen and they all just totally brushed it off. And then on top of that, they don't understand how she received only five years and why she wasn't put in a psychiatric hospital because of the random and unpredictable nature of her attack and behavior. But still, authorities really stood behind their decision and I guess nothing since then has happened. Apparently footage did end up being released though anonymously after all of the different shows aired that captured all of the incident and there was apparently a bit of footage that had been deleted. It shows two officers saying that the sisters should be given a 136, meaning that they should have been held on account of their mental health and be given a proper assessment. And this is in the original incident of the motorway. 
you know, officers said that they needed to be held because they assumed something was wrong with their mental health, like anyone would if women were just repeatedly running into traffic saying people were trying to steal their organs and, you know, had all these random broken cell phones on them that were unexplainable. But none of this ever happened. None of these things were ever done. And it also would have meant Sabina would have never been released only after a day, meaning Glenn might possibly still be alive. But a lot of people refuse to put that in the timeline of everything. I have not seen the video. I will try to find it. I can't promise anything. But basically, they think that police purposely told the people producing these different shows to take that out because it shows that they knew something was wrong way, way beforehand and didn't do anything about it. This one has then gone over the bonnet of that car. She's then got a punch chase and ran across there. This one? Yeah. Is she under arrest, Well, 136 if she is. Well, she needs to be, but, but if nothing else, to get on the carriageway and uh, for her own safety. You guys have requested this endlessly. This has been like one of the craziest stories. I have no explanation for it. Nobody has an explanation for it. You know, there was a lot of different mental health issues that were being thrown around when Sabina was on trial for killing Glenn, but nothing seemed set in stone ever. And then Ursula just went home and seemed to be completely fine. And a lot of people really attribute it to the fact that Ursula and Sabina were twins because twins seem to have this very bizarre connection and there's actually a lot of horror stories revolved around twins and strange things that twins have done, acts of crime, bizarre behavior. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a few of these on other true crime and mystery slash paranormal channels. So it's definitely very, very, very strange. And I personally am not sure what exactly to think of it. I fully understand Madness 2. I looked into it quite a lot when I was looking into the other case where I mentioned it. And I get it, but I don't, I don't know. It's just so bizarre to me because normally when that happens, at least from what I've seen and I'm no professional, it's like an ongoing problem. It's not like in spurts where all of a sudden they're fine and then they're not and then they're fine and then they're not. So I have no idea and I'm interested to see what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. This one was definitely a wild one. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and don't forget to be back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for more. Hit the subscribe button to become a member of the Howland fam and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!